that he didn't see color in you. I think it's it's uh, proper of me, you know, to commend you for saying that because you don't just say it, you live it. I mean, you've you've helped a number of South Africans uh, beyond color line. I'm talking boxers. Tommy all stays. The list is endless, and we've written stories about that. So you know, I'm saying you 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 don't just talk, but you walk the talk. You know, and uh, I, I don't know what will it take for our country, you know, to, to kind of give you the respect, the recognition that you, you, you deserve. It's long overdue. I mean, I personally feel I, 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 I feel you, my brother. I feel you, but... Um... I, I'm, I'm not about recognition, you know, um, I always believe as long as the man upstairs recognizes what I'm doing and is happy with what I'm doing, then I'm happy. You know, um, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm not really bothered about, you know, getting the recognition in South Africa for what I do for my South African people. No, no, no. I do things because I feel I came into this world, you know, for a reason for a purpose, you know, um, and, and and that's exactly what I'm doing, you know, um, like, you know, like you look what's happening now in South Africa, you know, with the looting, you know, like uh, one of the things that I'm doing, I'm um, in having discussions with my publishers so, you know, we can donate some of the, you know, um, proceeds or sale of these books, you know, towards rebuilding, you know, the economy. Uh, so, you know, the money will go towards, you know, helping those people who lost their businesses, you know, uh, to, to rebuild their businesses. And if they do that, you know, people who lost their jobs, you know, might get their jobs back, you know. And, 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 and I know for a fact, I'm not surprised, you know, I know for a fact that some of the people that lost their businesses were not insured. They don't have insurance. So it's going to be really hard, you know, for them to get their businesses up and running again. Um, and and I, don't ask, I don't expect them to get much assistance from the government. You know, um, and, and if they do get the, the assistance, you know, there'll be a few chosen ones who get that assistance, you know, um, which has always been the case, you know, um, and, and, and I can tell you right now, you know, um, there's already been a press release out there. I've actually, you know, um, I'm going to be making a comeback in boxing, you know, um, I'm going to get involved in, uh, uh, um, in a number of, you know, boxing exhibitions, you know, to raise money you know, towards, you know, rebuilding the South African economy. Uh, you know, um, this is a time, you know, when, you know, the world should come together and assist South Africa. You know, um, what, you know, it, what's happening now, you know, it's actually happening at the time when, you know, um, the South African economy needs revival, you know, uh, because of, you know, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And, 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 and the same thing about what's currently happening now, it's, you know, it's going to push, you know, potential international investors away. You know, um, think of it this way, you know, if I'm a potential investor and I'm thinking I'm going to go invest in South Africa you know, and create jobs for people, but I'm, then, I, then I look, I see in the news people destroying other people's businesses. You know, I'll be thinking twice about doing that. You know, um, so people need to refrain, you know, from that conduct and, you know, uh, and behavior because, you know, you're just making things worse for yourself. But again, like I said earlier, you know, it comes down to frustration. People are just frustrated, you know. So I'm going to play my part, you know, to try, you know, and, and revive the, you know, the Australian, I mean, the South African economy. And, and if it means putting my own health at risk, I will do that, you know, because this is my country of birth. Uh, my brother, any, haven't you had any, for the lack of a better word, thought or aspiration of coming back home and get involved in politics? Actually, I am coming back home. I will be coming back home in the future. And yes, I will be getting into politics. Yes, you know, with the intention of trying to change things for the better, to try and assist people. You know, yes, I'm definitely coming back home. 
in the future. And uh, maybe one other thing that might, you know, help you to kind of raise money to help South Africans at the same time, make sure that your, that your legacy lives on. A thought from me, a love mondo belt that will be contested for by all African champions. Yeah, it's something we can do. That that's yeah, sounds sounds great. That's that can be done. I don't see any difficulties with that. That can be done. But you know, my thing is all about um, education. Mm. Okay, so if I ever get back, if I ever get into politics in South Africa, the first thing I'll be looking at it will be education. You know, I'll be trying to see that you know every child is educated, and that when you talk about free education, you really mean free education. Okay, uh, make sure every child gets free education. Um, so, that, and then, you know, the other thing, look, the biggest problem in South Africa, you know, and I, I think, you know, um, the current governing government, you know, um, the current government is not listening to people. Okay, so the first thing will be to, you need to listen to people. Go around, ask people what their problems are. Ask, you know, what can you do to assist them? You know, um, no one is listening to the people. Okay, so the first thing will be to go around, talk to the people, listen to the people, find out what their problems are, find out how you, what you can do to assist, and then, you know, work on that. Okay, the other problem in South Africa that I would really work on, you know, it's, um, you know, crime. You know, but we all know where crime is coming from. You know, people are hungry. Mm. You know, when people are hungry, they'll do anything to survive. So if you can educate people, you know, and they have jobs and you create jobs for them, you know, then there'll be less crime. Okay. And the other issue that really, really concerns me in South Africa is the issue of domestic violence. Mm. You know, um, you know, you've got, you've got people in power. you got, you know, people in power committing, you know, domestic violence. You know, they're not setting good examples. You've got the police, people in the police force committing, you know, domestic violence. So if I ever come back to South Africa and I get into politics, that's one of the things that I'm going to be tackling. You know, um, domestic violence is a very, very, is a serious concern that needs to stop. You know, um, yeah, so no, I, I am definitely coming back to South Africa in the future. And, um, you know, I do talk about it in my book as well, you know, uh, that, you know about my future aspirations, you know, it's coming back to South Africa. Uh, Jim, take me to, you know, a courtroom. The boxer, you bob and weave, you throw the jab, you move around, you cut the corner, you have your men against the ropes, you bombard him with punches, the referee jumps in between you, the two of you, he stops the fight, you walk away with the prize. Bam, you the winner courtroom that experience share it with me look I, I think one of the things you know um i'm trying to prove or that i've already proved to people that uh you know um athletes or boxes we can also be academics if we choose to mm. you know um i, I think um you know, often fighters, you know, boxers or footballers, you know, are often seen as buffets. Mm. You know, and I needed to show and prove to people that, you know, no, we can actually be, you know, we can do anything we want to do and we can be just as edu educated as anyone else out there. You know, um, and this, the, the funny thing is, um, you know, often people ask me that, you know, how did you do it? You know, how did you manage pursuing, you know, a full-time career, you know, boxing career, you know, while at the time, same time you were studying. You know, what people mm. don't really realize is that, you know, you know, I was also raising my children single-handedly. Mm. Okay. So, and I always tell people that um, it's all about, make, you know, um, managing your time. 
you know, if you set a timetable and stick by that timetable, you know, any, anything is possible. So here I was, you know, I was training about six hours a day as a professional boxer. Okay, so I would train about two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, two hours in the evening, you know, because it was my full-time job. But I was raising my children, but I was studying as well. You know, and, and there were, I recall there were times when I would have to travel. And I should talk about it in my book, you know, I'd be tra- traveling overseas, you know, for fights. You know, often my bag, you know, would be full of, you know, law books. You know, often when some people, you know, when you travel, your suitcase is full of, you know, your training equipment, your clothes to change and all that. You know, my book was, my bag was always full of law books. And I remember the custom, sometimes at the custom, they'll be asking, where, where are you going with all these books? <laughs> and I had to explain to them now I'm studying law. And uh, so what I would do is in between training, you know, I would go train, you know, after training, I would just go lay back in my hotel room and study, you know, uh, so it can be done. Look, um, it wasn't easy switching from boxing to law, you know, and, um, and, and, and again, you know, uh, and believe me, remember I told you earlier on, you know, that apartheid is a problem of the whole world, you know, mm-hmm. I've experienced some sort of, you know, um, apartheid here in, in Australia, some sort of, you know, form of, you know, what you could, you know, what amounts to racial discrimination. You know, and I'll give you an example. You know, I remember when I first became a lawyer, you know, I would walk into a courtroom and I would go, um, you know, sit at the, you know, at the bench and the court officer would walk up to me and say to me, ah, oh, no, 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 uh, you should sit at the back. This is for lawyers. <laughs> no, this, this is reserved for lawyers so I, it, it, it used to piss me off in the beginning and I would think oh okay just because I'm black I can't be a lawyer you know and, and some 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 court officer, court officer would walk up to me and say uh, and ask me you know outright you know um, are you a lawyer because only lawyers should be sitting here and I'll be looking around I'm thinking why don't you ask all these other Caucasian people if they're lawyers you know, uh, th- that in itself, you know, uh, it's a form of, you know, um, you know, it's a form of apartheid, you know, it's a form of, you know, racial discrimination, you know, uh, um, I recall it used to piss me off really bad, but you know what, I, I started thinking to myself, you know, you know, you know, I shouldn't really, you know, be getting angry all the time, you know, because of this, so, you know, I thought to myself, you know, I need to apply some reverse psychology, you know. I remember one day I walked back into the courtroom and um, a court officer walks up to me and says, you know, um, are you a lawyer? So I looked at her, instead of getting angry, I looked at her and said, yeah, damn good one, and sexy as F. <laughs> <laughs> so she remembered that, <laughs> you know. So everybody started talking about it in the courtroom, you know, so it's like everybody knew the story. That time I walked into into the courtroom, people always laughed, you know, smiled at me because they got to know me. So, you know, instead of getting angry about it, you know, I applied some reverse psychology in a nice way. And, um, you know, everybody loves me now, you know. Um, I don't even, you know, some courtrooms, people just know who I am when I walk in, some of the magistrates, some of the judges, you know, I don't even have to introduce myself, they already know who I am, you know. Uh, you know, I'll give you another example, you know, of, um, you know, uh, what could amount to, you know, uh, a form of, you know, racial profiling, you know. Um, I, I used to date, you know, um, 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 a Caucasian, a white girl, you know, and I remember one day, you know, we we, we were um, we went for a walk. You know, uh, we were walking in the street, and then I actually write about it in my book. is in my book as well. You know, we were walking, um, and then we we came to you know, uh, some traffic lights. Um, uh, in South Africa, you call them robots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> traffic lights. <laughs> so yeah. we came to the traffic lights, and. Um, it so happened that you know the traffic lights were just next to a police station. Now, we were waiting for the lights to go green, and then these two guys drive. They drive next to us. They stop their car. Two, you know, white guys, two Caucasians, you know, and one of them, you know, he rolls the window down, you know, says to us, "Hey, Tupac, 
So we ignore mm. them. Mm. Yeah, I said it again. Hey, Tupac, you know, we ignore them. Mm. You know, and um, one of them, you know, took it a step further. I said, hey, Tupac's, you know, Tupac's B, referring to my girlfriend, you know, Tupac's mm. B, you know, you know, you, li- you like big, you know, black C, you know. Mm. So, that kind of pissed me off, you know. I'm okay, you know, you can, they can say that to me, you know, I'm okay, and you know, I can deal with that, but you are not going to insult my partner. You are not going to insult my family member. You are not going to insult, you know, a female in front of me, you know. So that's when I lost it, and I said to them, you know, yeah, so does your mother. So they got out of the car, they were going to attack me. So my girlfriend runs to the police station, which is just across the road. You know, she tells them, you know, look, there are two guys out there, you know, attacking my boyfriend. Okay. You know, I'm in the street, I'm all ready to fight. <laughs> you know, the cops come out running. You know, yeah, guess who they grabbed? So the cops come running, they grab me, they throw me on the ground, okay? You know, it wasn't up until, you know, my girlfriend said to them, no, you fools, you know, I'm talking about, you know, as I told you, those two guys are attacking my, you know, my boyfriend. So how did they mistaken one black guy for two guys attacking, you know, the boyfriend? So to me, there was some form of, you know, racial profiling. Um, you know, it wasn't up until, you know, the, you know, the, the, the station manager, you know, um, came out and, you know, uh, and, you know, and actually I told the guys, do you know who this guy is? You know, do you know who you, you really want to get into your fight with him? You know, and, and they started apologizing and they asked me if I want to press charges, but I said, no, but I felt really down. I felt like I was back in South Africa. I felt like I was you know, going through what I, you know, I experienced, you know, during apartheid. Um, but, you know, can I draw a conclusion that, you know, Australia is a racist country because of that? No. I'm no. Not. And I'm not going to draw a conclusion that, you know, Australia, you know, is a racist country because of the experience I had in the courtroom with the court officer. No. You know, but the thing is, there are some bad apples out there Okay, and these bad apples apply everywhere. Okay, so I can't really draw a conclusion that you know the country is racist because of that. Okay, the same thing in South Africa. You know, you can't really draw a conclusion that you know everybody is racist because you know of what we experienced in the past. Okay, it was really bad. You know, during apartheid. You know, um, but you know, not. Uh, you know, I, I end up honest with you, some of my best friends during apartheid were white people. Okay? Uh, and some of them, you know, I had friends there who would actually stand up for me, you know, if someone was making racial, racial comments towards me. And, and they were white. You know, so there's bad apples everywhere. Mm. You know, um, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, look, I... I enjoy what I do as a lawyer, and I talk about it in my book, you know, um, I, I, I give back to the community, that's my, you know, I do a lot of pro bono work for indigenous people, uh, that's my way of giving back to the community, um, for me, it's also a way of, you know, thanking them, you know, for welcoming them, in me, in their country, uh, you know, and I, I always think of, you know, indigenous people, you know, I'm talking about aboriginal people in Australia, um, when I look at them, you know, I always see there's some similarities between my life and their life. You know, uh, they've gone through what I went through, you know, and they are still going through it, some of it. Uh, and that's why I always feel, you know, um, in, especially when it comes you know, to incarceration, you know, you look at the incarceration rates, you know, of Aboriginal people, you know, they, you know there's just so many of them, you know, incarcerated. Uh, and, and, and I feel, you know, uh, somebody should help them, you know. So I do a lot of, you know, pro bono work for them. Uh, my areas of specialty are actual family law and criminal law. Um, so I love what I do. I enjoy it. And um, yeah, you know, you never know. I might even open up some law firms in South Africa in the future. But, you know, if you really want to hear more, know more about, you know, you know, what I do in Australia, you know, get the book. 
ਇਸ ਵਾਲੀ ਅੰਦਰ ਹੈ ਵਾਹ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅਮੇਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਲਵ ਮੋਰ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਆ ਡੋਨਟ ਨੋ ਵਾਟ ਟੂ ਸੇ ਐਕਸੈਪਟ ਟੂ ਆਸਕ ਯੂ ਵਾਟ ਵੁਡ ਯੂ ਲਵ ਅਸ ਟੂ ਡੂ in order to make an awareness to south africans about this book and where how can they you know south africans get this book and when will it be launched in the country well we are launching it right now <laughs> oh <laughs> look <laughs> it's been released <laughs> i believe it's already been released i believe it's already on the shelves out there um uh so and i believe you can you know buy it from you know um bookshops and you can also buy it online um yeah and if 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 you really you know if you can always contact you know Jonathan Ball Publishers they'll be able to assist you as well in relation to where to find it you know to get the book but it's out there already can you show us the cover again so that people can recognize it on the shelves there we go good there, go. Good there. <laughs> looking very distinguished <laughs> looking just like He, you can now. easily mistake him for my you can easily mistake him for my diva eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a big shoe to feel <laughs> <laughs> that's a really big shoe to feel my brother you don't have some, to uh... no carry on no oh, okay no i wanted to you say he doesn't have to feel my diva's shoes he is special in his own right Definitely. Yes, now he's Definitely. always been a look my lifetime hero, you know. If you look at my lifestyle, you know, it's um always following his footsteps, you know. I you know, there's a lot of similarities in what um, you know, if you look at my lifestyle, I'm sure I'm guided by what Mandela has done, you know. He's always going to be my lifetime hero, which really saddens me to see what's happening in South Africa today. You know, it saddens me to see that you know all that hard work that, you know, he did, you know, even sacrificing, you know, his life in 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 caster you know for 27 years you know sacrificing you know his you know his life with his family you know the saddest thing that could ever happen to a man you know is being unable to you know see your children grow you know spend time with your children that man did it all you know and fighting for a better south africa but then today i see all that hard work going down the drain it saddens me I uh, I wanted to share some comments from that we've had um I'll just read them out. Here's one from Avram Ruruli who says nda good input indeed. Messina in South Africa we are proud of you keep the flag flying high and we will find ways to work together and bring the book to be available to the sports fraternity and youth in South Africa. And I think you were speaking a bit about that about how you're going to share some copies with the youth. Yes, and thank you. Thank you Abram. I know Abram very well. You know, he does a lot of great work, you know, for the community in the Limpopo region, you know, uh and it, I'm 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 pleased and you know, thank you to know that you know you're supporting your uh you know, my project. Thank you very much. I'm not sure the last time that you were greeted with an inda. Inda, inda, au revoir. It's been a while. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> And then we've got a comment here from Maria Fisser who says well done regards from Cape Town. Maria, I hope you're going to get a copy of the book if you haven't done it already. And I must share this last one. Thank you, Maria. This is a comment from this is a comment from my mother Celeste who's been watching. She's uh she also um spent some of her childhood in more most of her childhood in Benoni, so you've got that in common. She says what an incredible journey. So. <laughs> uh, thank you, Celeste. Supportive thank moms. you very much. <laughs> cool. Um Bungani, do you have any closing closing thoughts? Closing uh thought no but a remark. I I, I don't know what came into love most love mondo's mind to actually ask me to write something. If you open that first page and I was like is this for real? Who am I in the big scheme of things but my brother? I to I, I repeat what I've said. I don't have proper ways to describe the way how I felt when you approached me for that. You 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 made me feel special and important. 
you are a brother in the true meaning of the word brother and not only to me but to a lot of you know south africans particularly in the boxing fraternity who always you know make positive comments every time you write stories about you continue being the good man my brother and uh, your hard work dedication love for south africans and even thinking about you know helping revive the country will never go unnoticed may the almighty god bring you closer to your dreams thank you bogani i really appreciate your words and and thank you for the great forward uh, so if you do purchase the book you realize that there's a forward that forward was written by uh, bongani you know it's a great forward thank you thank you very much <clears throat> Right. Well, um, I'd just like to thank uh, Jonathan Bull Publishers very much for helping us put this event together and to Love More and Bongani for a very, very interesting conversation. Um, thank you, Bongani, for leading the conversation with some great questions and some great thoughts. And thank you, Love More, for sharing your extraordinary story. I think it's very inspiring and hopefully the book will motivate some young South Africans to achieve greatness as well. Thank you, and I want to thank all those, you know, uh, all those people who joined in um, tonight. You know, uh, thank you very much. Well, I say tonight because it's night. It's, it's night over here. I think it's night now in South Africa, right? It is. <laughs> it's morning. So it's getting <laughs> yeah, so it's creeping towards morning for you. Tonight, thank you very much. <clears throat> um, so Fire yeah, as you were saying, if you haven't got a copy of. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't got a copy of Tough Love yet. It is available in big, all good bookstores. And as I always say, it's available in good, good bookstores and bad bookstores. It's also available online and we're all used to buying stuff online now. So if you wanted, you could buy a copy right this instant by going to your favorite online book retailer and uh, searching for it there. And I'm sure it will be delivered in the next couple of days at some, for, for some of those sites. Um, and yeah, thank you very, very much for joining us and have a good evening. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night.